Good day fellow investors, welcome to the Sunday 10 stock analysis video. What I do for my job is stock analysis and I'm very grateful when you give me all those comments and suggestions. And in this video we'll go through some of yours, the most requested, and I have added a little few of mine that I want to dig into and just see where we are now in the cycle and price and reward perspective. One note before we start. I have analyzed the 10 stocks, but I didn't look at the market cap. I haven't compared the valuation I've got, the thinking, the value I think there is to the market capitalization. So that will be interesting to discover as we open the stock prices. If you enjoyed this video, analyze that like button. And if you haven't, consider subscribing and click that notification bell because I make a few videos and you see which one adds value to you or not. Thanks for supporting the channel and let's start now. The first stock, many of you requested it, is Domino's Pizza. And also here on YouTube, I listen to a podcast, don't remember which one, but they were discussing it as a good investment now, one of the best out there in the current environment. So the thesis, the bullish thesis is lowest valuation since 2013, low cost product offering, so a good price, point in the market because they are cheap to feed the family, light asset business model on franchising, huge growth opportunities ahead, best e-commerce pizza model, so that's where we are now, best and profitable delivery. On the risk side, valuation still too expensive, input prices to put pressure on margins from food to make pizza, labor, delivery, and there is also a tiny bitsy pizza issue of leverage. Morningstar has it fairly valued. Let's see at the key ratios there. So if we look at revenue, really good growth over time, staggering growth, great things that they have done. They have even improved gross margins, stable operating margins. So really good net income. What is this? Quadrupled, which is staggering. Plus they did buybacks, which means that earnings per share did even more. This is almost a 7x, which means that the stock must have done greatly over time. There is a dividend, of course, because of buybacks, the book value per share is negative. But as long as the business is doing okay, then this doesn't really matter. I will prepare a video about the Starbucks and the Domino's in this case, likely in the next 10 days. Free cash flow for valuation. We have growth, 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 500, 400, 500 billion. So there we are. There will be likely some pressure there. If we look at the business, number one in global quick service pizza, and they expect to still grow over time slowly in the US, but still mid single digits 5% globally so still good and then also continue to improve those margins as said they are the cheap ones we once ate this in the Netherlands I remember once or twice it's not great pizza it's cheap of course but okay it is what it is and they lead with service everything goes through your phone that's the strategy there technology and US market still a little bit to grow they expect significant growth globally so US small growth there nothing special still something but really the global growth there is still to triple globally and that means also more revenues more profits so still a lot of room to grow over the last years they did something stellar sales growth at 10 percent nothing bad there this is something to think about the ratio the leverage ratio is 5x so that is something important to keep in mind when investing the leverage and buybacks and everything have increased earnings per share by 24 percent which is really remarkable but then again we see how at the start of course of this remarkable story returns have been amazing and then as we go towards now returns aren't that amazing anymore so we have to see whether this is now from growth to value if i look at the debt we'll compare it later with the market cap we are at 5 billion so i'm looking at this valuation 500 million free cash flows likely longer term growth let's say seven percent how much am i willing to pay for that 500 7% growth, I would be happy with the price earnings ratio of 
yes, I'm going to say it now, 10, which means 5 billion, then we have growth ahead, and that would be an extremely conservative situation for me personally. Of course, this is still growing 7%, so if I pay a price earnings ratio of 15, then 7 plus 7% growth, that's still a return of 7%. Still great. Price earnings ratio of 15, market cap 7.5 billion. Let's see price earnings ratio of 20, that's 10 billion valuation plus the growth. So still 10, 11% returns from an investment, which is stellar if they keep doing what they are doing. I have also added Domino's Pizza's free cash flows of uh, half a billion. And then depend on what they do with those cash flows, cut out the dividend a little bit here for 10% return with a 15% SPI ratio with 8% growth. You are around 10 billion market cap. So that's what you compare. And let me just check the stock price. So where's the market cap? 13, the price earnings ratio is 29. So a little bit lower on the cash flows there. Of course, stellar performance for those who understood the business model here. Then a little bit too exuberant and now we are a little bit lower. As said, 5 billion would make it extremely cheap and this also tells me that the market is still a little bit overvalued. It's still pricing in things from six months ago and now we still have to feel that pain. So as Jeremy Grantham said and we discussed it in a video yesterday, there is still two legs down and if this is the first leg down, so 30% still 30% from the current, 250. And if you check it, it was there pretty recently. So nothing spectacular there. So from a valuation perspective, a little bit risky, I would say. And also there is the debt issue that you have to keep in mind. If things revert, unlikely if they have really this good mode, good positions, good everything. But that's also just a risk to mention it. So for now, good business, a little bit pricey still. Now let's go to the next stock, Stellantis. So in general also this part will be about car stocks so you will see how invest in that cyclical stocks. That's what you have to keep in mind but the most requests were about Stellantis but the same applies to every other car stock. Now there are four core targets for the company so net zero they will increase electrical sales by 100% in Europe, 50% in the United States. They will be amazingly, they will be number one in customer satisfaction, of course, and transforming the business model. This is always with cars. They always transform something for double digit operating margins. No car company ever reached stable double digit operating margins. But okay, let's look at the business iconic brands. Shit shit. Oh, I know Alfa Romeo. I know a person that really gets rich on those cars and that's a mechanic. I spoke to him and he said he's now building his third house on Alfa Romeo cars. Sorry, I had to put the joke there, but okay. This is, this is the lowest quality brands I think in the market. Okay, so it's a cheap car company. I think we all agree on that. If you buy a Maserati, you look cool for five minutes and that's it's a, then it's a piece of junk, You usually. Nevertheless, they are now doing some crazy, crazy things. E-power train, gigafactories, charging. Wait, 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 wait. STLA, TSLA. They want to be the next Tesla. This is insane. The Fiat becoming something cool and Tesla hydrogen, everything they are doing. What is this? Venture funds, I also looked at there is everything. Venture funds, batteries, data, they will now become a data company. So every cool word that has been in the automotive industry over the last years, they have splashed it into their presentation because they are transforming themselves from shitty pandas to a great car company. Sorry, but it is the truth. And this is really remarkable. Of course, e-commerce will now be their motto. The old lady buying the panda will go online and ooh, I'm buying myself a panda. It will be delivered tomorrow. And this is their long-term strategic plan to copy what Tesla is doing. Yes, Stellantis will do amazingly, but let's look at the financials. So industrial free cash flows for 2021, 6 
billion industrial, what does that mean? What are they not telling me here? Okay, look at what are they taking out of the cash flows or the market or something. They are tricking me. Nevertheless, let's see, 6 billion. And then what's the plan? They will double revenues over the next eight years by selling the same number of normal cars and then just everybody will buy a Stellantis electric vehicle. Really, really amazing. And the suckers at Morningstar are buying the story because the fair value is three times the current stock price. Let's dig deeper. Of course, this is after the mergers or whatever they did, but you can see how car companies work. So growth at best is a miracle. Net income, they have good times of net income and very bad times of net income. So that is the cycle there. Negative free cash flow, positive free cash flows. They say they will create 100 new electrical vehicles. That's 100 billion. So really put something into perspective from a car company. And I have been analyzing car companies for seven years now. So this is insane. And there is another question. How will the macro impact car companies? So last 12 years that has been great for car companies we have been borrowing at no interest rate zero free money you get uh, refinancing everything and now with higher interest rates cars are getting more expensive and if you are investing in a car company this is something you must read i'll put this on my free stock market investing course because this is the core for understanding reading this is martin b zimmerman a vice president at ford that he made a talk in 2008 and what he explains is pretty simple we are now selling 15 million cars in a recession that's 13 million so a drop of 15 million to 13 million a little over 15 percent is really the difference between decent performance and severe losses so with a lot of job relocation, job destruction, etc., I might add. This you have to understand. So you can read here what I wrote in a car company analysis. This is from 2015, I think. So higher oil prices, this and that. But, but Stellantis will make 30 billion a year. The truth is that they will lose 20 billion a year in the next recession. And the next recession might be around the corner. That will be the time to analyze a company like Stellantis. Plus, they have 20, 50 billion of debt. Great, amazing, really, really 50, oh, holy moly. So invest in your own peril in Stellantis because I really think this is what the management is doing to investors, to pension funds with all those promises. They are really now in that position and maybe they have already gone two seconds after this snip that I took. So that's the land is invested their own pearl. Let's look at the stock price likely, of course, down heavily. That's why everyone is asking about investing into it. So really, really crazy. But if we look at the long term, we can see that it didn't do much. It has these peaks of exuberance, then it crashes, then it has peaks of exuberance, and then it crashes. Here, if it is here and it will not go bankrupt, you might want to take a look. But wait for a recession, wait for news of layoffs in car companies, job restructuring, government intervening, and then see which one of the car companies has the best survival feeling there and that's when you buy if you must buy perhaps even better when as peter lynch says cyclical stocks wait for the upturn so wait for things start to improving take advantage of the jump and then run away and then run away before it goes down my friend that's car stocks another market cap presentation of course the p ratio is uh, five but keep in mind they will lose 20 billion next year in the recession so this will go even lower taking over selling good assets uh, disaster especially with 50 billion of debt that comes at 10 percent for something like this if the plan restructuring transformation doesn't work stay stay away my friends next talk t row price one of the most requested asset manager and uh, one of the most requested stocks for me to analyze let's see here really really good numbers doubled revenues net income 
almost quadrupled, dividends up, buybacks, so everything looking, looking great. Free cash flow really boomed lately with the exuberance but if we go back we have something more stable so let's say 1.5 billion i've looked a little bit at what the company does so global investor with 1.4 trillion of assets under management so a lot of money and what they do is what an asset manager does they did really really well over time so annualized stock returns double digits are really amazing but now they have reached let's say a peak and now a lot of here assets under management will depend on the market and where the market goes redemptions etc so regular dividends are okay they have even pushed it a little bit higher but recently the growth has gone and if we have market turmoil for the next 10 years <laughs> the growth might be zero for 10 years however really good balance sheet nothing wrong with the balance sheet really really strong this is nothing and again morningstar his here shows that the fair value is pretty high but the uncertainty is medium depending on where the markets go and this is the main issue where will flows be to go for earnings and profits i would say with higher rates i think that these market businesses will be stagnating for the next decade or two because they have been enjoying booming years over the last two decades okay some acquisitions something like that but let's take stagnation on four dollars of dividends for evaluation four dollars dividend What's the dividend yield you want for something that is unlikely to grow significantly or above inflation over the next decade? I would love a 7% dividend. So the price should be 100 for 4%, 7%. I want it at 60, let's say. Zero price, here it is, 4% dividend, 1.5 billion. If they have the stability to pay it out and they have it, know that, so that should be okay. Nothing wrong with T row price, but of course, as things are reverting in the market, the market is scared that it might hit it harder. So just revert to where it was before the exuberance. Keep in mind, these were the most exuberant times over the last decade for stocks and trading and everything. And now that is reverting check what they have in the books whether they did some crazy things over the last 12 to 24 months uh, private equity whatever crypto this or that something crazy that might really hit them check that if not it looks like a stable business if they just manage assets over time there will be rebalancing uh, redemption this and that but it should keep a safe base 1.5 billion this usually then gets traded at a 10 valuation which means 15 billion and that's what the market is pricing in the market is saying 1.5 billion what will be your average cash flows this can go lower and that's why you have the fear here and uh, selling all right a lot of requests came for amazon likely because the stock price is going down so let's take a look at amazon we did it really recently also in a video i'll put the link to the video in the description below and cash flows 46 billion on average depending on their investments and there it's all about the growth rate next 16 percent per year 12 percent per year and then you have to see okay how much will amazon grow over time if i put a 20 multiple there then the intrinsic value is 1 trillion for the market cap 2 trillion if it grows faster at a higher multiple if we are more conservative with a 15 multiple then and if it grows slowly, then we are at 783 billion. However, Amazon is Amazon. I have no idea where it will grow. I've made this video and discussing how there are limits to its scale and size. It grows, it grows, it grows, but at some point it might hit too big territory. And 
Morningstar his, here says that they will grow at 14% for the next five years and that the fair value we see it here is much much higher but the uncertainty is uh, high so if they keep on growing that's it but if they don't then it's a different story and if we look at the price so now the market cap is 1 trillion I know it was much much higher just a while ago so that's Amazon the P ratio we can't check it because of Rivian's and how it impacts but the free cash flows are 50 let's say they could have free cash flows of 50 billion which means that we are trading now at the price to free cash flow of 20 which is extremely cheap for a company like Amazon and for those who want to acquire such a business and it is a great business nothing to say about it it might be the time to really take a look as we are back to pre-pandemic levels maybe it will go lower maybe not but it looks very very interesting and exciting here the lower the better so it is about owning this business and we see here for a 10 percent return on 16 12 percent growth ahead it is pretty fairly valued margin of safety let's put slower growth ahead let's put 10 percent ahead and then seven and then a terminal multiple of 15 then we are still uh, at halfway to where we have to go for really an absolute bargain so what to do with amazon depends on how you approach investing stock price nobody knows where it will go but we are already at the price to cash flow five percent look at whatever amazon is doing and think okay where will amazon be in 10 years will it double likely and if they can do that with all the power that they have the scale the everything then it's already a good investment whether it will be 50 percent up or four times up you don't know but this looks like a great business and now decide on portfolio exposure and then see where to go from there of course at the end of the video put a gun to my head one million i have to invest in one of these stocks so really really interesting and we'll compare things at the end with all the other stocks now home depot and target retailers pretty straightforward businesses to analyze so home depot free cash flows pandemic boom okay but we are around 10 11 billion this might revert as consumption falls down but let's say they can make 10 billion a year and i have looked a little bit at the presentation nothing special retail that's it so we are there the market cap 280 billion that's a lot a lot of money for 10 billion in cash flows and this was really exuberance the market is always like that the market gets exuberant about temporary things and then panics again about temporary things for me this is too expensive retailers give me a five percent dividend yield uh, if not uh, goodbye so plenty of room to go lower especially if interest rates go lower and you can see that in 2018 stable business it's still far away let's take a look at target much lower cash flows so we see those go up and down they have had some growth here but let's say that they can make three billion in free cash flows in standard things of course they are always trying to do something but then again nothing stellar compare that to the market cap around again price to free cash flow of 20 on a conservative basis the dividend yield is still there so is this down to yes of course it's down Sven so 40 percent so I don't know who was buying these at these levels and not selling so really really insane still plenty of room to fall nothing for me now another company Square so growth stock not really my territory but let's see they're doing business payment platforms uh, whatever they are doing they have enjoyed staggering growth scale and everything and then boom then the growth suddenly stops and when the growth suddenly stops that's a big issue for such companies however free cash flows are there it is a positive business that's already something a billion of free cash flows or half a billion here so if they can just keep things stable that's already something let's look at the stock price so 33 billion 
you are paying price to free cash flows of 30 times no growth now but of course when things are growing everybody was so excited now we are just back where we were with equal risk to where this was so growth stocks are like that if they can keep growing, when will they keep growing? Have they saturated the market? And then there is something with these new hot growth stocks. Everybody's after them. You're finishing your great Ivy League college. You want to go into something, get funding and go after them. That's the business they are into. So competition, etc. I don't know what's the moat. Let me know in the comments. Where do you see them? and or where the market sees them in five ten years do they really have such a strong mode or there is competition if there is competition eating their market that's really a tricky situation there now let's go to some companies that fit my circle of competence freeport barrick and bhp freeport is the copper giant there and uh, Copper sales, of course, are going higher. Everything is great in the current environment with extremely high copper prices. They are lowering that. Companies almost went bankrupt a while ago, so they have now no net debt. So really, really great. Long-lived reserve base, a lot of mining ahead, providing the minerals that are needed for the revolution, technology and everything. But they always are so exuberant. They are always chasing that performance and then now when you look at the presentation they go for five dollars per pound of copper while all conservative estimations are for free three and a half but that's free poor they will always shoot for the sun and if they hit the moon they are happy but this is then from the presentation of 2019 and you can see already overshooting the copper price that was too there but they were always saying okay operating cash flow at 330 we are somewhere at 7 billion take away 3 billion of investments that's then 4 1 billion of taxes of everything so that's 3 billion in an average copper situation a little bit growth so 3 4 billion of free cash flows is what they can make of course now the new presentation is already much crazier so they are looking at much higher but not even that high because their assets are really good and as copper prices go higher it's not that much of an impact more on valuations nevertheless let's say that they can make on average to be conservative 3 billion per year let's compare it to the market cap 3 billion per year price to free cash flows of 15 so that's a little bit risky let me see how they performed of course they are a little bit down but not yet down i need the two legs lower would be great everything looks great now but with lower copper prices next year the p ratio will also get higher or the stock will follow so really really interesting following i'm looking but there are smaller copper companies that might be more interested they'll make here or there some as i'm digging into the sector and waiting for the opportunity of course after another leg or two down and if we have a recession that can happen let's take a look at gold so gold prices have been around 1300 and then after pandemic and the fed not being able to lower increase rates as much as wanted spiked higher and then now range around 1800 of course barrick does really well as the costs are around 1000 likely will be a little bit higher now with inflation and everything but still good profit margins there if i look at the net cash provided by operations and the free cash flow is a little bit more crazy but on higher prices let's say they make 3 billion they should be able to make 3 billion a year of course diversified global miner after the merger with african mines and they also keep in mind own this mine with a great great name and a great ore body so i have to mention it when i <laughs> discuss barrick sorry now looking ahead they return cash to shareholders everything looks great the dividend is going up and even if they make more cash flows they will make more dividends so gold with a dividend but i have looked here at what to use for valuation and you can see of course if gold stays to current levels pretty stable production there are no surprises then free cash flows over the next four years let's look per year divide by four free cash flows should be around four 
billion per year. That's pretty good. If gold prices go lower, we are at 2.5, 2 billion per year. That's the valuation trick there. So let's check the stock price market capitalization as an owner. We think as owners. Market capitalization is 35 billion. Oh, very interesting. Now there is also a dividend there. So 35 billion, the market gets exuberant, then it gets pessimistic, exuberant, now it's pessimistic again. So hmm, very interesting, 35 billion, 2.5 billion, now that's a little bit high for me, that's 7%. If they keep this at 4 billion, that's 11% free cash flow yield from gold. That's already something and that's a good valuation and dividend might also go higher. So if you want to play with gold, it's already interesting, especially if gold prices stay at those levels and then go higher. It's all about noise. We've discussed it in some videos. I'll put the link in the description below for the last noise gold discussion video. But when it comes to gold miners, Barrick is stable, is a big one. So how much money do I want to put in it? If it goes lower, I bring it back to, I don't know, 5, 7% of my portfolio. If it goes higher, I trim it down. You get the dividend while you wait. So it is an approach to having something different in your portfolio. I'm personally not a fan for it, but it looks interesting already at current levels from a cash flow perspective. Now let's go from gold to iron ore. And they made huge amounts of money because iron prices have been higher. So this is their average for the previous six months. Now they will be a little bit lower. So we'll see how this goes, but not as stellar as it was. Nevertheless, they are now going to do acquisitions again. Weren't they almost bankrupt because going into oil and acquisitions and now we go again. They really feel strong. That's a pity. Better to stick to what you do. Average iron ore prices will be to 2019 levels because now it's high but it is still expected to trim down as costs of productions are around 40, 50 now with inflation. So Iron ore prices will go to 2019 on averages. As you can see, there are ups and downs, crazy things. So it will be volatile, but the average conservative is this one. And if we look at the cash flows, average conservative, 10 billion cash flows. How much do you want to pay for 10 billion cash flows? 70 billion for a miner because when it gets to a recession it gets really really ugly and then you buy low and sell high that's mining investing bhp okay another 50 percent down then call me do you think i'm crazy as told you another 50 percent down and then give me a call been there been there will be there again pretty possible might not might explode on the upside, but might also not do. So I'm a conservative value investor, margin of safety. My margin of safety here is below 100 billion. Call me when it's there and uh, then we'll speak. So give me a million. Of course, put the gun to my head because I have to buy something from this. And uh, what would I buy? Let me check first. A million, how would I distribute it? I would uh, Amazon and Barrick, but I would also put things in cash. So Amazon, let's put 30%, Barrick 30%, and then play of the volatility. If Amazon and Barrick go lower, I put another 20%. If those go lower, another 20%, then reinvest the Barrick dividend. And I should be okay with that million over time. Everything else is too risky, too expensive, too pricey. Thus, it doesn't offer a margin of safety. Barrick has that gold, which is noisy. So maybe I should lower it a little bit from the exposure, go more from Amazon. So let's say on my strategy, 70% Amazon, 30% Barrick, think Sven. And uh, that should be something doable, some margin of safety. Of course, you never know how the gold sentiment will go. That's the risk. On the other hand, Amazon, how big it can go. It has a moat. It, it is strong. You can buy my book on Amazon too. So I would go for those two. Top one, Amazon, and then volatility play, Barrick. Thanks for watching. 
Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon.